Have you ever played a series and felt it was one of the greatest gaming experiences that you'll ever have? For me, that was Star Tropics. Of course, I was only a snot nosed brat when Star Tropics was released and had no idea what the world of gaming had in its future. But I digress. Hey y'all, my name is Justin, aka Shinky, and this is Shinky JRPGs. The original Star Tropics is still one of my favorite games of all time, and as a tribute to the sequel's 30th anniversary, I thought now would be a great time to give the second Star Tropics game a review. Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2 was released on the NES on March 15, 1994. And the interesting thing is this game, much like the first, was only released in North America, despite it being developed in Japan. Just a bit of history, but enough of that, time to get into the review of Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2. However, before we get too deep into the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be exceedingly awesome, make sure to hit that notification bell. Not only does it help with the channel, but it appeases the mighty YouTube overlords, so pop that corn and ice that drink and let's talk about Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2. Do you enjoy ridiculous stories that are incredibly over the top and goofy? Well, Star Tropics 2 doesn't really have a serious story whatsoever. Much like the first game, it makes fun of itself and there's next to no seriousness whatsoever. Star Tropics 2 takes place briefly after the conclusion of the first game. Back in Seattle, Mike Jones, the protagonist of the first game, is helping his archaeologist uncle decipher the alien artifact found in the first game. Mike then receives a telepathic link from Mika, the Argonian princess that you saved in the first game, and she gives him a hint on deciphering this artifact. After solving the riddle of the artifact, Mike is sucked into a time vortex and ends up in a prehistoric time period. After exploring a bit, talking to cavemen, getting an axe, and destroying the man-eating yum-yum, you find a tetrad. Look familiar? Yeah, a tetrad is a Tetris piece. See what I mean? Star Tropics isn't at all a serious game. No big deal, you get used to it. Anyways, you receive another telepathic link from Mika, telling you to go from time period to time period, collecting tetrads to save the Argonian race once again. You go to ancient Egypt to find the pizza that Cleopatra ordered several days ago, hope it has pineapple, and learn how to shoot psychic blasts with your mind. Then you go to London to aid Sherlock Holmes, visit the Old West to go gold hunting, now to Italy to save Leonardo da Vinci, and now to Transylvania complete with its own Dracula. Where's a Belmont when you need him? Next is Camelot to meet King Arthur to slay a dragon, then finally back to Sea Island from the first game to re-experience the first dungeon, go fight a boss rush, followed by the final boss, have Chief Coral Cola work some mad Tetris skills, save the Argonians, and you've protected the world once more. The story is silly, and the time travel is a nice change, if not just a reskin of the original game. It's super silly, but really, really enjoyable. Sometimes we all need just a little bit of silliness in our lives, and Star Tropics is the perfect game to deliver it. When it comes to gameplay, Star Tropics 2 isn't exactly spectacular. It's not bad, but it made some changes from the first game that I really don't agree with. Star Tropics 2 has two main styles. First, you have the overworld that plays like a standard RPG, where you walk from town to town and talk to NPCs in order to figure out where you need to go next. Most of these sessions basically amount to talking to every NPC and just unlocking the path to the dungeon. This is just busy work as a break between dungeons. The dungeons are where the real fun happens. They play almost like a Zelda game where you use your weapons to slay enemies and solve puzzles. Unlike the first game, you are no longer restricted to moving in a grid-based format. You can now move in all eight directions and are no longer locked in a single direction until you move an entire tile. A lot of people preferred this, but I feel the first game felt much more organized where this is just chaos. In theory, having full control over your movement sounds all nice and dandy, but the way it's executed causes more harm than it helps. Star Tropics 1 with its grid-based system had the whole game designed around it. Mike's attacks, enemy movements, boss tactics, it was perfect. However, you can't say the same about Star Tropics 2. Star Tropics 2's free movement makes it harder to pull off platforming jumps. 
Seriously, some of the most agonizing platforming sections in any game I've ever played. And don't even get me started on the combat. It's more or less the same as the first game. However, since enemies seem to move randomly, it's hard to aim and predict where to shoot your shots. And the lack of invincibility frames is absolutely frustrating. When you get hit, you don't have any time to get out of the way. And usually you get hit two to three times in a row, usually leading to death or hearing the most aggravating near death beep sound in existence. It's similar to the death beep in Zelda 1. However, instead of just hearing the beep in regular intervals, it beeps every time you perform an action. So instead of just beep, 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 you get beep, 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 Anyways, at the end of each dungeon you have a boss. Some of them are incredibly easy, but some of them are completely unbalanced and insanely difficult for no reason at all. The bosses of Chapter 4 and the final boss are the ones that stand out as exceedingly difficult. That being said, the dungeons are fun and quite varied, with entertaining puzzles. Nothing too difficult, but there are a few that might make you stop and think. Just don't be expecting Zelda levels of dungeons, or you might be a bit disappointed. I feel like I'm constantly comparing this to the first game. Oh well, it can't be helped. Such is expected when a game is a sequel to another. Do you remember Star Tropics 1? The game was bright and colorful, with beautiful and detailed pixel art. Unfortunately, the second Star Tropics just isn't the same. Star Tropics 2 just looks faded and washed out, very dull colors, and boring looking pixel art. Sure, some of the enemies are more detailed, but when a game just looks constantly faded, it really doesn't matter. The art style looks generic and very uninspired. It's definitely one of the weakest parts of the game, and honestly, just a huge disappointment after the first game looks so unique and spectacular. I can't help but wonder how this game's art would have been if it had been released on the Super Nintendo. It could have just been more beautiful in every single way. I'm honestly shocked that the game didn't get a release on the Super Nintendo. As I mentioned, Star Tropics 2 was released in March of 1994, but the Super Nintendo was released in September of 1991. That's almost three years into the Super Nintendo lifespan that we got an NES game. It was one of the two games that was released to push sales of the top-loading NES console, the other being Mega Man 6. It's quite a shame, but oh well. Cursed to dull colors and lost to superior technology forever, I guess. Another weak aspect of Star Tropics in comparison to the first game. Do you remember the music of the first game? That dungeon theme? The overworld theme? Absolute bops. The kind of music that sticks in your mind for 30 plus years, and you can still jam to until this very day. But the Star Tropics 2 dungeon theme? Well, not offensively bad, just it doesn't quite have as much excitement to it. It doesn't stick, and it doesn't have that dance in your seat rhythm that the first game's themes did. It blows my mind that the same composers did both games. How can one be so amazing and the other just be only okay? This theme continues with the other music of Star Tropics 2. Nothing really spectacular sticks out. In fact, I can't think of any other music that left an impression on me. Like, what about the boss music? You have the intensity of the first game's music? Then you have Star Tropics 2's boss music. Okay, I'll be honest, that's pretty cool. But not nearly as good as the first one. Music was just a huge downgrade, but to be fair, Star Tropics 1 was an incredibly high bar to match. If you've played NES games before, you know more or less what to expect when it comes to the length of the game. Star Tropics 2 is very linear and very to the point, from beginning to end, and if you don't get too lost, which is admittedly pretty hard save for maybe one or two sections, you're looking at about six to seven hours. Unfortunately, there is no real replay value. As for pacing, I briefly mentioned it before, but it can be all over the place. Some chapters you'll be over and done within 20 to 30 minutes, where other chapters are long with multiple dungeons that can take you over an hour. Difficulty as well is all over the place. Chapter 2 and 3 are incredibly easy, where chapter 4 is probably the hardest in the game, followed by 5 being incredibly easy again. Then chapter 9 is just insanely difficult, 
but only because it's a non-stop boss rush with very limited healing items. Still, I don't really have any real complaints. This was just a concept of the times, and the difficulty is just down to your skill. And the pacing of the long and short chapters can be pretty nice as the short chapters are a bit of a breath of fresh air from the more excruciatingly difficult and drawn out chapters. I suppose that's all down to your personal opinion and skill level though. So there you have it. While Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2 is definitely the weaker of the two Star Tropics games, and frustrating at times, it's still a very solid title. However, due to the very poor sales, and most likely because of being released so far into the Super Nintendo lifespan, blame that top loading NES. And after scouring the internet, I can't really find any estimate for sales numbers, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was under 50,000 units. Ah oh well, honestly, I would suggest Zoda's Revenge Star Tropics 2 to any action game fan, because even with all the heck I've given it today, it's still a very solid title that is well worth its time. Have you played Star Tropics 2? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm always lurking around there, so let's get a chat going. If you enjoyed this video and want more retro and modern reviews as well as lists, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell. And as always everyone, have a wonderful day. Super retro.